Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So Jesus got up from the table, took off his robes, picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash bin and began to wash the disciples' feet. And then he dried them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they're completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. Jesus knew who would betray him. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. In this moment, Jesus, the Son of God, the one who was sent to save everyone, humbly gets on his hands and knees and washes the disciples' feet, displaying this act of servanthood and this act of vulnerability. And just imagine that moment that Jesus bends down and stoops down at eye level with the disciples who would have been sitting reclining. They would have been sitting probably on the floor. So for Jesus to get down, it would have put Jesus at eye level with them. And there's something so powerful about Jesus being at eye level. You know, this last year, we've had half of our faces covered up and just our eyes shown. And, and I have found that it's even harder to look people in the eyes with my mask on. There's, there's something so vulnerable about really looking at people in their eyes. When we have conversations, we often look around or look down because to really look at somebody in their eyes I don't know, we don't like to stay there too long. I think it's probably because when we look into somebody, we see their brokenness. And that scares us because we know that we too are broken. So in this act, Jesus engages in the brokenness of the disciples. And the disciples on this night the night before Jesus would be arrested, the night where Jesus, um, uh, before Jesus will be crucified and put to death. The disciples look into the brokenness of Jesus. And in that exchange and in that moment of vulnerability is extreme power. 
and it is the very presence of God, the holiness of God. They experience the unconditional love of God. They experience it in Jesus, and I believe Jesus experiences it in his closest friends. So I invite you on this Maundy Thursday, Maundy meaning mandate, where Jesus said, do this now to, to one another. He wasn't just talking about literally washing one another's feet. Maybe instead he's inviting us to get at eye level with each other, to look deeply and to notice the brokenness that lies within us. It's what we share, it's what we have in common, and it's where God meets us to offer healing, to offer love, to offer hope and resurrection.